The 4th of July, easily one of my top 10 favorite holidays. A day for fireworks, hot dogs, parades, and Columbia, an American goddess. A symbol that has long faded from our memory, even though you can still see ripples of her impact throughout American culture today. From our clothing lines to our movie studios and even our superheroes and video games. But who is Columbia? Where did she come from? And how did she die? Part 1. The Goddesses Who Ruled the World In fact, Columbia is the personification of America. This was during a time when every nation had their own goddesses. The trident-wielding Britannia, the sword-carrying Germania, and Marianne from France. The idea of the goddesses came from Rome, who deified everything from war to thunder. If they were around today, would social media be a god or a goddess? Well, the Romans, who by the way borrowed this idea from the Greeks, even had their own goddess of Rome named Roma. When the Romans conquered Britain, they created the god known as Prydania. Everywhere they conquered, it came with the package deal of a warrior goddess. Much like today, where we obsess over the past, Americans loved the old Roman culture. They believed you were not a real nation if you didn't have a goddess, and America wanted to look like a real nation. First found during the 1730s in the Gentleman's Magazine, we took the name from a person credited for finding America, Christopher Columbus, and slapped on an IA at the end to make it sound Latin, which sealed the deal. But the way we knew her as a mythical figure did not occur until much later during a war that defined America, the Revolutionary War. Columbia was still mentioned throughout poetry, but in 1776, the same year the Declaration of Independence was signed, Columbia became a goddess. Part 2. How a Goddess is Born In 1775, during the Revolution, while Britain was winning the war, General George Washington read a poem dedicated to him titled, To His Excellency George Washington. A poem about freedom mainly freedom from England and its tyranny from King George III. More importantly, it was actually written by an African slave, Phyllis Wheatley, and her poem was published for all to read. It was an instant hit. Columbia, the goddess of freedom, liberty, protection, became the goddess we once knew. Columbia was seen everywhere. Political comics, paintings, cities, ships, and even songs. In fact, up until 1931, the national anthem of the United States was actually titled Hail Columbia. Artists displayed her wearing white for purity or red, white, and blue for the American flag, a Phrygian cap, and sometimes a sword and shield, which may seem familiar to superhero fans. The history of the Phrygian cap is really interesting and worth looking into if you have some time. Little girls would dress as her for 4th of July, and there were even official guides on how to cosplay as Miss Columbia. Her imagery grew through time, and even during the American Civil War, both sides would cry out, Give them hail, Columbia! as they charged into battle. This was around the time when a relative of Columbia appeared, and her spotlight began to fade. Let me introduce you to Uncle Sam. Or Part 3, How to Kill a Goddess. Uncle Sam is mostly known today as the personification of America, but at first he was representing only the American government. Columbia and Uncle Sam often shared the spotlight, with artists showing the differences between the state of the government and Columbia being the state of its people. But it was after World War I when Columbia became an icon of the past, even though she was on every poster leading up to the war. In 1931, after the war, the Star Spangled Banner replaced Hail Columbia as the national anthem. The way Americans saw their country had changed, Columbia was slowly becoming a symbol of the past. As World War II came around, Uncle Sam was alone with his posters calling Americans to fight, and Columbia was completely gone. Americans saw themselves as a powerhouse, and Uncle Sam was that powerhouse always ready to take charge. But Uncle Sam was not the only one to replace Columbia. It was Columbia's twin sister, Lady Liberty, who also had that honor. Others actually believe Lady Liberty is Columbia and lives on through the new Colossus. Today, when cartoonists draw America, they are shown by Lady Liberty and Uncle Sam. In the end, it was a combination of a change of time and new values and ideals replacing the old. Even though she faded, her legacy still lives on, especially in America's capital, Washington, D.C., also known as the District of Columbia. Epilogue. I love the idea of Columbia, and especially what she represented for us as a people. In a way, she was our voice, but most importantly, she was a symbol that we all stood together. Today, when I look at political cartoons, I mostly see new icons that represent the United States, and it's not Lady Liberty or Uncle Sam. The donkey and the elephant are two sides, are two choices. I would love to view America as 
one side, one choice, an America that stands together. It's worth noting that even when our country was most divided during the Civil War, the North and the South still cried out for Colombia, which brought us together again. I would love to see a United States of America again, much like it was when our goddess watched over us. She was a symbol of peace, freedom, a protector, and a warrior. Happy 4th of July, everyone. It's her day after all. Networking Maverick out. Happy connecting. Don't ever